as we know him as the chief instructor that pushes contestants to their physical and mental limits on SAS Who Dares Wins. But before hitting our screens, Billy Billingham spent 27 years in the SAS himself, undertaking dozens of classified and extremely dangerous missions. Billy joins us now in the studio as he gears up to tour the country, sharing his deadly experiences over the last three decades. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Now, we obviously know you for being super disciplined. It didn't start out that way for you, oh, though. Far from it. <laughs> yeah. Growing up, I was probably one of your worst nightmares if you're, you're unfortunate enough to be with my parents. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was terrible. I grew up in a family of five. I was a middle child. And anyone who is or got a middle child, you know we are wired different. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we know how to play the game. And I did. Even at, I started going rogue around about nine years old. But I knew what I was doing. You know, and I always played the numbers game. And like any mother would do, she'd always stand behind you and say, hey, he got in with the wrong crowd. And I'd be stood there going, I was the wrong crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it started. Yeah, it did. Where we're up to date now, you're in a very successful TV show. You've spent many years in the SAS. You've got a tour. Tell us about the tour very briefly. Yeah, the tour is called the ALF tour, Always a Little Further, which is um, something that started from being a rogue to being in the SAS, which is actually on the uh, clock tower there, Always a Little Further. And the tour starts in October um, in Swindon and goes all the way up and down the country, England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales, and uh, finishes in the end of November. But it's going through that life's journey, basically. So when you're on tour, what can we expect? Because obviously you were in the SAS. Mm. Everybody always has so many questions about the SAS and oh, it's people like yourself go, can't tell you. Well, it's not I can't tell you. I can tell you about me being in the SAS. I'd never talk about operational side of it, anything oh. that would put anybody's life in jeopardy mm -hmm. or, you know, that side of it. But I can tell you what it was like how to get in there and how I felt and yeah. why did I get in when 180 of us didn't. So I can talk about all that sort of stuff, okay. you know. And for you, you say that probably being in the military was your saving grace. Yeah. And why, why, why would you say that? As, you, as we've alluded to, from the age of nine, I started to go rogue. I started to get into gangs. Um, by the age of 11, I was in uh, juvenile court, um, just go, going wayward. Mm -hmm. And then I joined the cadets at 11 years old. And while I was in the cadets, I was being taught how to do first aid. It made sense to me. I could see where that was going to... And all these skills, you know, communications and, and discipline. And I thought, wow, that's where I want to be. But then in school, I was being taught how to cross the T's. And I thought, what sense does that make? It didn't. Right. So I then saw the light at the end of the tunnel. This is, I knew I had the passion right from there. I loved the discipline. I loved what the military was all about. And, I thought, and uh, the people coming back that had left before me, I just had so much respect for them. Mm. And just thought, you know, that's what I want to be. I want to be respected for doing good things, not yeah. being this tough little guy who thought he was tough. I wasn't tough, I just thought it was. So what was your military journey that got you to the point where you joined the SAS? So initially I joined the Parachute Regiment uh, in 1983 as one of 70, uh, seven of us passed that. And I, I spent nine years in the parachute regiment with, it, with three para, yeah. um, which was amazing. I'd never been on a plane in my life. First time I got on the plane, I got thrown out of it with a parachute on my back. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> First time I landed in a plane, I landed in a country called Belize. I didn't even know where it was. I just heard Central America and thought, hey, I'm going to America. <laughs> and there I was, I ended up in the jungle. So I had nine years with the parachute re regiment, starting at the bottom, of course, and working my way up. I finished off that tour in 91, 92, as an instructor in the depot, doing, passing on those lessons that I'd learnt now. Wow. I'd done operational tours, you know, around the globe, including Northern Ireland. So I had a lot of experience, and then I decided, where do I go next? And then from there, I decided the only place you can go is the SES. So mm -hmm. that took me on that journey to that next step. And that, your, your time there really sort of, I suppose, you said taught you not to judge a book by its cover. Yeah. I mean... If I said to you right now, you're going to get five SAS guys going to stand in front of you, I would imagine you go, OK, probably fit, big, whatever. Yeah, we have a picture of what you would assume yes. they would yeah. look like. Of course yeah. you do. Yeah. You know, perceptions. Mm -hmm. And then I had the same, going through selection. I didn't know what they were going to look like. I expected these super fit. And I walk in on day one to see large people, skinny people, big mm -hmm. noses, bald heads, and I was like... This is the SAS. <laughs> yeah. You know, really? <laughs> I love how you pack big noses. <laughs> <laughs> big noses. <laughs> Behind my own. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, I mean, um, is, it, is it as clandestine and the secret as we are, it's made out to be? It is, yeah. I mean, you know, people go, oh, well, you talk about the regiment, you talk... We talk about 5% of our life, and I would never... And most of us don't, do not talk about anything that's not already out in the domain anyway. 
it's already out there, you know, once it's been confirmed, we can talk about it. So yeah, it is, it's very secretive. There's so much going on all the time, you know. You step into this new world and I was going to places in countries I'd never heard of. Mm -hmm. I was learning a language I'd, I'd never heard of. It, it was, and it should be that way. Friend. You know, yeah. they're out there, the guys are out there even today doing amazing things to keep, so we can enjoy the life we have. Oh, That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. Obviously you're taught about interrogation and being questioned. Um, Obviously, the TV series is out there, SAS, Who Dares yeah. Wins. We're not allowed to talk about who's necessarily in some of the forthcoming series, are we? No. Do you think you could withhold being interrogated about who's in the series? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I could do that, yeah. <laughs> OK, <laughs> OK, here we go. I'm not telling you. Is Matt Hancock in the new series? Everybody in there gets beasted and made cry. OK, I'm out. <laughs> Even I'm like, I do not worth it. Not worth it. Yeah, Come back. Leave it, leave You're it. Safe over this side. But you have done a new series, side. haven't you? You won't be disappointed, trust me. You don't need to know. It's, it's, watch it. Every time we do it, it gets better because it follows the ethos of the regiment. We'll learn from our last ones and make it better. The ones in there people will want yeah. to see. Yeah. And they'll and all cry. Do you know what? With, with your show, it's on, actually... You could do that, Michelle. Come on, you could do I all of this. I definitely could not. I'm, you could I, do this. I would tell you that for free right <laughs> now. I definitely couldn't. You could. But the, the beauty of your show is actually... You know, some shows are made a little more interesting when you plonk a celebrity in and now yeah. you're interested because they're on it. Actually, the beauty of the show is everybody's journey. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know, what yeah. other TV show they yeah. might be on or what song they sing. You actually really just want to watch the journey. That's exactly what it is. It's, you've all got your personal favourites or dislikes or whatever, so you'll watch it for that reason. But for us as DS watching it, it's a personal yeah. journey to every one of them. You know, you just saw Fatima Rubred there, 60 years old, absolute legend. Mm -hmm. Now, people go, well, how can she do what, what she can't? We push every single one of them through their 100%, yeah. you know? You don't expect her to keep up with, you know, Ashley Kane. But we expect Ashley Kane to run a little bit faster than he's normally done. Yeah. We expect her to do a little bit more than she... And they all do it. So it's all their personal journeys, and people will watch you for that reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's amazing. Well, fantastic. Billy, it's a pleasure to meet you. Your Thank tour you. starts on October the 2nd in yes. Swindon. Yes. Good luck. goes all across the country. Yeah. Good luck with that. Stops it. The Please way he just looks this. at you. <laughs> it's just so, unner it's so unnerving. It's so unnerving. I could deal with you, you around. Are you, free? Are you free every day this week? <laughs> <laughs> I might need oh, you just to just hover over there. <laughs> when we get unruly. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Billy, give him a look. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you.